April, welcome. Welcome to One Life Club. It's amazing to have another boss lady as a member of our community. And it's always great to see your contribution to our community as well. And um, and I always get excited um, when when we are um, adding another business um, uh, woman to our to our club as well. And um, so it's great to to um, to have you on board. And we definitely look forward to um, watching you grow as well. Now, young businesswoman, tell us what April does. I own two cosmetic clinics here in Canberra, and we do all injectables and skin treatments. Do I need any injectables myself? Or I'm still good. No, you're looking pretty smooth. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's because I'm already injected. Just kidding. I'm oh. not. <laughs> <laughs> nothing wrong with that. No, clearly so nothing, good. clearly nothing wrong with that. Okay. Now you are in the industry that over probably last 10 years, and please correct me if I'm wrong, is it became very competitive. Yeah, I got into the industry just before COVID. So yes. I probably got into it just before it became quite competitive. So now it's a really hard market to yes. get into. How do you stand out? Um, I probably stand out. Um, I've got really good staff. That and, and staff is the key. Yeah. And we always have new treatments, ongoing education as well, as I find other clinics kind of stick to the same thing and don't expand and don't keep on top of what's new and what's working. And specifically in a fast moving world that we are living in today, things are changing in any industry all yeah. the time. And I, and I see businesses that have been around for a hundred years that they're closing down um, and they, you know, they might have a great infrastructure. They might have a great marketing plan that worked 10 years ago, but it doesn't mean it's working today. So it's always dangerous um, uh, times if you don't keep up with what's, what's happening at the moment and also what's next, because there's always another hungry and motivated April that wants to take your business out there. Yeah. <laughs> so what, you know, saying, so you've been in business now for about five years. No, only three years. Three years. It's 2024 years. now. So time oh, is... Four years. Four years. Because I didn't open the clinic until... So I brought the commercial place and then we went into lockdown. And then I yes. couldn't start. And then as soon as we got out, then I started. So, so why didn't you just stop on one clinic? Why, why, why go harder and double up? I don't know. I just really enjoy enjoy what I do and I like to push myself. So yes. I just want to expand. And I also, like I talked to a guy and we want to get to a place where we have more financial freedom, have the clinics running and we can take a step back a little bit. But yes, we'll see what happens. What would you say is the biggest challenge of running business in general? Um, at the moment, um, there's a lot of new rules and regulations that are coming into the cosmetic industry. So I think at the moment that would be the hardest part about running an injectable clinic um, yes. because we can't really advertise our services anymore. Um, right. Yeah, so it's all changed. Another challenge probably would be staff and getting really good staff and keeping good staff as well. Well, it, interesting you say that, you know, I always – believe that there is two types of marketing one yes you can advertise your business on so many different platforms from social media to to any digital um outlet out there but then there is second part which i think is the best part is actually giving people great service and then coming back and referring you yeah, because a lot of a um, lot of businesses out there, they constantly keep advertising. They might not offer good service, and they might lose a client, but they almost don't care because they're constantly marketing it and constantly getting new people, new people, new people. Now, if the business now, if people like your company can't advertise anymore, then you really people that will actually win the race are people that are actually offering a quality um, service. And, and work to whoever is actually visiting your business, then you're actually relying on them coming back. May, do you think this will actually improve the standard in the industry? Um, yeah, I think a lot of people will probably take a step back and those are probably the people that rely on advertising. Um, but I think the people that 
really push in this year, um, it's going to make a great difference in the industry. I think it's going to be a lot more safer, but I yes. do feel that their education towards clients isn't going to be as great because we can't um, mention certain things. I think a lot of people are going to be confused. Yes. Yeah. How, how does a business owner like yourself deal with these challenges that are throwing at you? Because when you started your business, you know, um, you didn't think that there will come a day when you actually can't advertise your business. Yeah. I, at the moment, all good, but I think it's going to get harder and it's just keeping on top of the rules, regulations. There's lots of um, meetings at the moment that I'm attending and, yeah, just keeping up with it all and making sure I'm doing the right thing and then also focusing on what's happening in the clinic. So talking to my staff and seeing what a good approach is that moves away from the advertising and kind of what you were saying, like what can we yes. do different in the clinic? Because obviously, you know, running your business, you are constantly hit with yeah. challenges on daily basis. Yeah. And you kind of have to have this bulletproof um, uh, mind and, and kind of the mind that is constantly looking for solutions and way to keep moving forward. Because, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, like, you know, I always say that every day in a business is a freaking war because, you know, you, there's, there's no such a thing as a clean day. You go there and everything is perfect. You, you constantly go there and you're hit with different challenges. Yeah. Um, uh, but I always say, you know, we can't complain because we signed up for this. You know, we had a choice to yeah. actually, you know, have a normal life, what I would call, and work for somebody else and not deal with shit that we deal on a daily basis. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it is um it is a morning, so I'm still waking up um uh, my myself. What's next for you, April? Um, at the moment I'm trying to take a step back and work more behind the scenes. I've got a manager who started two weeks ago, so we're just trying to see what works, what doesn't work. Um and then I'm hoping to come to Brisbane. So can't wait. Yeah. The plan is the plan is to keep expanding. The plan is not to slow down. No, no. So take a step back so I can do the things that other people can't. Yes. Yeah. So and, that's and I'm assuming I'm assuming when you started your business, you were hands-on doing everything. Everything. Yeah. I got into into the industry because I was like, oh, I want to work for myself. I only want to work small amount and now I work 24 seven, but I love it. Like I could not do anything else. I absolutely love it. And I love how I work all the time. Um, but initially I was like, I'm getting into it. So I don't have to work as much. And you know what, which is interesting that most business owners, entrepreneurs, they think, you know what, I'm going to start my own business. So I can work my own hours. I can work as much as I want. And then the reality hits, you work all hours not hours that you want to work because obviously when you create something, you're so protective of it. You want it to grow. You don't want it to get hurt. And, um, and I think right thing that you, you know, you have done, you know, there's a, they always say start of any business. You do have to do everything. You have to do every part of your business. Um, uh, one is important that you get to know it and two, you're leading by example, and, um, and, you know, when you start growing your team, you know, any task that anybody's doing, well, you know what, I have done it myself. So if my expectation is this high, that's because I put it up there myself for you to follow. Um, otherwise, if you just start a business where you're acting as a business owner, not as the one that actually um, been through it, I think it's always different. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, I look, I look freaking forward to, um, I look forward to watching your journey as well. If you had it all over again, would you get into the same industry? Yeah, definitely. I wish I got into it even like a little bit earlier. Yes. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love it. I love being on the floor, I like being off the floor. I like both sides of the business. So, what do you think? What do you think is stopping people from actually starting their own business? Um, I think this. They're scared. It's the unknown. Um, yeah, mainly that they're scared and they don't know if they're be going, to, going to become successful and they're too scared they're going to fail. But it's all a part of it. <laughs> and before you know it, you know, they might be 75 years old and say, shit, 
why didn't I actually give it a go? What what could have been the worst thing that could actually happen to me? You know what I mean? Um, uh, you know, the, the life is not a rehearsal. Um, um, when it's over, it's over. So I think it matters that whatever we want to do, we just go for it and um, and give it a go. You know, it doesn't matter if we fail, we can still try to do it better um, uh, next time as well. How do you deal with the stress of business? My partner helps me a lot with that one. Um, <laughs> he helps me a lot. Um, I think... Because running any business, doesn't matter whatever it is, it's not easy. You know, we yeah. are dealing with, with staff, you know, like you just said, with, with uh, new laws and regulations. And you're dealing with every single thing that business is throwing at you. And you still have to find a way to actually thrive and stay mentally okay while you are running it. How do you yeah. deal with it? Um, I think so Guy does help me a lot. He yes. is really good at being like, okay, well, let's step away. Let's go for a walk and then come back and talk about it. So he helps me a lot, like taking time away, like going to the gym. That helps me refocus as well. Um, and just talking to like-minded people and who have experienced stress and yes. how they dealt with it or that's that's what I find the most helpful because when I talk to friends that are not in the industry, they're like, oh, it's fine. And I'm like, well, no, it's my business. So yeah, I think talking to like-minded people and taking a step back and then coming back to work on the what's happened. So having a, having a good partner, it is important. 100%. He's, he's helped me so much. And I, and I think, you know, um, having a good circle of people around you is so crucial. And that's one thing that we're trying to do with One Life Club is actually having a people that are in the in the club supporting each other as well and lifting each other and understanding, you know, because we are all in the same boat um, yeah. that needs to keep moving um, forward. And um, uh, question for you, looking back, your high school, your primary school, what is one thing that schools should teach that that are not? Just everyday situations like controlling your emotions, um, mortgages, loan, because we don't know anything about any of that when we go to school. Um, yes. Interest rates or just the basic everyday day things. That's so important as well. And I always say there should be a freaking subject called common sense. Because I got, a, I got a feeling that most people are lacking lacking yeah. um, common sense full stop. I think, you know, looking back at school, I got a feeling a lot of things that they, you know, they just complicated for us, you know, to teach us the things that we will never use in life. But you're right, you know, basic life decisions that we have to make every single day as a humans. Um, uh, it'll be more critical for anybody to actually um, to actually know. Well, I look forward to um, seeing you in person. Okay. Gold Coast coming up, a few days event. And yeah. um, it'll be great to meet you in person um, uh, and keep moving forward and keep, keep having fun while you're doing it. So thanks so much for having me, Emil. Pleasure. See you soon, April. Yeah, bye. Bye.